Hi guys, it's Mrs. Glenn. Welcome to the 4.9 Linear System Real World Applications video. In this video, we're going to talk about using the three different ways to uh, solve systems, mainly focusing on elimination and substitution in real, in real world problem scenarios. So the first thing you want to do is define your variable, and that just looks like this. So for example, if you have two different things in the word problem, you want to give the first word or the first item the x value, and the second item the y value, just like x comes before y in the alphabet. So the first word comes first, so that's your x, and then the second item will be your y. And then you want to say what they each represent so that you don't get the, them confused. Then you want to set up your equation and solve, so you're going to use those defined variables with the signs like plus, minus, equal sign, etc. And then you're going to solve for whatever variable they're asking to you to solve in the question. So if they want to know how much each of those items cost, then you have to solve for x and y. And let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, so for number one, you have the sum of two numbers is 30 and their difference is 12. Find the two numbers. Well, first thing you have to know is what does sum and difference mean? So make sure you're up to speed with those terms because we use them quite frequently in math. So sum means that you're adding them together and difference means that you're subtracting them from each other. So we're going to make x and y represent the two numbers we're looking for. And then if it's the sum of those two numbers, we're going to add those two numbers together. And that's going to equal 30. Whenever you see the word is, that means it's an equal sign. So the sum of the two numbers is 30, which so that's x plus y equals 30. And then the other one is the, and their difference is 12. So you want to keep the same order as you did with the first problem. The x plus y, x came first, so the same thing, but you're going to have x minus y equals 12 it's because the difference is 12. So don't rearrange and don't put y minus x because that doesn't make sense. You have to keep them in the same order. So now we're going to find those two variables. So first thing you're going to do is get y by itself from the first equation, and we're going to use substitution on this method, or substitution method on this problem. So when you subtract x, you end up getting y equals 30 minus x, and then we're going to take that 30 minus x and substitute it back into the second equation where y is. So remember, we have to distribute that negative 1. Even though there's not a negative 1 in the problem, it's minus the parentheses, which is the same thing as a negative 1 in the front of that parentheses. So you have to distribute that into everything on the inside so that you have the right signs for each term. So negative 1 times 30, and then negative 1 times negative x. So that equals negative 30 plus x for the parentheses, and then we're going to drop down the x on the left-hand side, the equal sign, and the 12 on the right-hand side. Now we're just going to combine like terms and solve for x. So we get 2x minus 30 equals 12, add 30 to both sides, then divide by 2, and you get x equals 21. So now we're going to take that 21 and plug it back into e either equation, wherever x is. I'm going to pick the first one just because there's a positive y and I don't have to change that later. So now I'm going to subtract 21 on both sides, so that equals 9. So now I have my x and now I have my y, so I know the two numbers are going to be 9 and, 29, and 21. So this isn't an ordered pair, this is just asking you for those two numbers. So we can write them separately, 9 and 21. All right, number three, the difference between two numbers is nine. So remember, difference is subtraction. And that would look like, well, first we need to identify our variables. So x and y, again, are those two numbers we're looking for. And then the difference would be x minus y equals nine. And then the second uh, sentence is actually a little bit different. It says the first number, so the first number, which is x, plus, so plus sign, twice the other number, so 2y is going to equal 27. So you literally are translating it word for word into a math terminology. So if you just take it and break up the sentence, you'll be able to figure it out. So now we have our two equations, so that's a system, and now we can solve for the two variables. So I'm going to actually use elimination on this one. If we multiply the first equation by negative one, that's going to cancel out our x's, 
So that's why I'm using elimination is because we have a variable x that's by itself in the first equation and the second equation, which makes it easy to just multiply the opposite um, in, the, in the first equation to get that negative x so they cancel out. So then our first equation turns into negative x plus y equals negative 9. And then I just copy down x plus 2y equals 27 underneath it so that we can add those down. Because remember, when the signs are not the same, you add. So we have a negative x and a positive x, so we add. So you're just going to go straight down it within each column and do them individually. So the x's cancel out. Then you have a 1y plus a 2y, so that's 3y and negative 9 plus 27. Now you're probably wondering, how do I know that this is a plus sign instead of a minus? Well, this is a positive 27, so that's why we are doing negative 9 plus 27. So you just take the sign that's in the middle between the two numbers, and that's what you're doing with the operation. So this is a positive 1 plus a 2, so we got 3. So negative 9 plus 27 is 18. All right, and then now we're going to divide by 3 on both sides, and you get y equals 6. So then you're going to take that 6 and plug it back into either equation. I chose the first one because we don't have to cancel out the 2 in the second term with that 2y. So in the first term, the variables are by themselves. So now you can just add 6 to both sides, and you get x equals 15. So the two numbers they're looking for are 6 and 15. All right, number five, the sum of two numbers is 20. The difference between three times the first number and twice the second is 40. Find the two numbers. All right, so the sum, which is plus, of the two numbers is 20. So that one's easy. It's just x plus y is 20. So x plus y equals 20. And then the second sentence says the difference. So we're going to use minus this time. It says three times the first number. So the first number is x. So we're going to write three times x. And difference would be minus. And then it says twice the second. So twice the second would be 2y. And that's all going to equal 40. So now again, I see that we have x plus y equals 20. So if we actually multiplied this first equation by 2, we could cancel out our y's and use elimination method. So that first equation is going to be multiplied by 2. So it turns into 2x plus 2y equals 40. Then I just copy down the second equation underneath it. And because we have different signs, we're just going to add them down. So 2x plus 3x is 5x. Your y term cancels out, and 40 plus 40 is 80. Then divide by 5 on both sides, and you get x equals 16. So now you're going to take that 16 and plug it back into the first equation, because that one has the y by itself. So then you get 16 plus y equals 20, and you just subtract 16 on both sides, so you get y equals 4. So our two numbers we're looking for are 4 and 16. All right, for number 7, the cost of three boxes of envelopes and four boxes of notebook paper is $13.25. Two boxes of envelopes and six boxes of notebook paper are $17. Find the cost of each. So we have to first identify what our variables are going to be. So in this scenario, the boxes are mentioned first. So that's going to be your x variable. Sorry, not x variable, but your, your x variable, yes. And then your um, second item is the notebook paper. So y is going to be the second item, which is notebook paper. So now you're going to take, you have a couple things to keep in mind. Whenever you have something that costs something, you're going to have one system that has just the x plus the y equaling the number of actual things. Like if you were to count how many boxes of envelopes and how many boxes of notebook paper. If you were to count those, not how much they cost, but just how much there are, then that's going to be the x plus y equals however many there are. But then you have also, you have the amount of money that it's going to cost. So with this scenario, they're not telling you how much items they have. They just tell you how much they purchased in the first uh, item and or first register, and then they purchased a second time in the second register. So we have two different equations. So you have 3x plus 4y equals 1325 for the first sentence, and 2x plus 6y equals 17 for the second one. 
So in this scenario, because both variables have coefficients, which are the numbers in front, you're going to want to use the elimination method. So if we multiply the first one by 2 and the second one by negative 3, that would cancel out our x variable. So our first equation would turn into 6x plus 8y equals 26.5. And the second one would turn into negative 6x, canceling out our x variable, minus 18y equals negative 51. So if you add those two equations together, the x's cancel out, and then 8 minus 18y is negative 10y, and 26.5 minus 51 is negative 24.5. Divide by negative 10 on both sides, and you get $2.45 for a box of notebook paper. So now we just take that and plug it back into either equation. I picked the second one because it had a whole number 17 instead of a decimal. And then you just are distributing that 6 times 2.45, getting 14.7. Then subtract 14.7 on both sides. Then you get 2x equals 2.30, divide by 2. And you get envelopes, each box of envelopes is going to cost $1.15. So that's your two items that you're looking for. $1.15 for a box of envelopes and $2.45 for a box of notebook paper. All right, number eight, the cost of 12 oranges and seven apples is $5.36. Eight oranges and five apples cost $3.68. Find the cost of each. So again, in this scenario, they give you two different equations, so you're just going to set those up. So they mentioned oranges first, which means X are going to be oranges, and they mentioned apples second. So Y is going to be your apples. So in the first sentence, you have 12X for the oranges, and 7y for the apples is going to all equal $5.36. And then the second sentence, you have 8x for oranges and 5y for 5 apples, all going to equal $3.68. So now you have these two, and you're going to figure out what you're going to do with them. So if you use a, the elimination method, you can cancel out the second term, that 5y and the 7y, by multiplying by... Um, whatever it takes to get to 35. And the reason why I chose that one instead of the x variable is because the number to get to 12 and 8 to be similar is a, a larger number than if you were to do the other one. So you could do 24 if you wanted to multiply the first one by negative 2 and the second equation by a positive 3 if you want to. Either way is fine. I just chose to do it this way. So the first equation is going to be negative 5 distributed into everything turns into negative 60x minus 35y equals negative 26.8. Second equation is 56x plus 35y equals 25.6. So then you're just going to add them down. So negative 60 plus 56 is negative 4x. Your y's cancel out. And negative 26.8 plus 25.76 turns into negative 1.04. Divide by 4, negative 4 on both sides and you find that every orange costs 26 cents. So now you can plug that back into either equation. I chose the first one. So 8 times 0.26 is going to turn into 2.08. Then you're going to subtract 2.08 on both sides, and you get 5y equals 1.6, divide by 5, and you get y equals 32 cents. So every orange is going to be 26 cents, and every apple is going to be 32 cents. All right, Gabby and Cindy, Sydney bought some pens and pencils. Gabby bought four pens and five pencils for $6.71, and Sydney bought five pens and three pencils for $7.12. Find the cost of each. All right, so we have, first we have to establish which one's which. So we have pens are going to be your X variable, because that was mentioned first. And Y is going to be your pencils, because that was mentioned second. So the first part where they tell you something costs something is for Gabby. So Gabby is going to be 4x plus 5y equals 671, and Sydney will be 5x plus 3y equals 7.12. So I'm going to get rid of the names so we can manipulate those a little bit. So we have um, not a lot we can work with, so elimination is the best method for this one. So if you multiply the first by 3 and the second one by negative 5, you'll be able to cancel out your y term. So you would first do 3 times 4x turns into 12x, 3 times 5y 
turns into 15y, and 3 times 671 turns into 2013. And then the second equation, same thing, negative 5 times 5x is negative 25x, and then negative 15y equals negative 35.6. So now you're going to draw your line and add them down. So 12 minus 25x is negative 13x, and 20.13 minus 35.6 is negative 15.47. So you're going to divide by th negative 13 on both sides, and you get x equals 1.19. So that means every pen is going to be a dollar 19. Then you're going to take that dollar 19 and plug it back in wherever x is. You could pick either equation. I picked the first one. Then you're going to do 4 times 119 turns into 4.76 plus 5y equals 67, 671. I mean, then subtract 476 on both sides. And you get 5y equals 1.95, divide by 5, and you get y equals 0.39. So every pencil is going to cost 39 cents. And number 11, a garden supply store sells two types of lawn mowers. The smaller lawn mower costs $249.99, and the larger mower costs $329.99. If 30 total mowers were sold and the total sales for a given year was $8,379.70, find how many of each type were sold. All right, so this is what I was talking about earlier where they tell you how many total they sold or how many total they bought. And then you're going to have to use just X plus Y equals that total. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so the first mower they mentioned was the smaller mower. So that's your X. And the second one uh, is the larger mower, so that's your Y. And they tell us that they um, purchased 30 total throughout the year. So that's that X plus Y equals 30. So if they sold 40, then it would be X plus Y equals 40 and so on. So in this scenario, when they tell you they have a certain number sold or a certain number purchased, it's always going to be that X plus Y equals that amount because it's the number of smaller ones plus the number of larger ones all going to equal 30 in some combination or another. Then the other equation is going to equal the cost of each of them. So you have 249.99 for your smaller one, so that's 249.99x because that's your smaller mower. Then you have 329.99y because that's your larger mower. So every small mower is going to cost 249.99, so that goes with your X, and every larger one is going to cost 329.99. And they all totaled a total value of 8,379.70. And obviously that's without tax, because they never mentioned how much the tax was or if it was included. So now you can first equation, what I would do is substitution, because you have that X plus Y equals 30, you can just solve for x and get what x equals and substitute it into the other one. So we're going to take that 30 minus y and plug it in where x is. And you get 249.99 times 30 minus y plus 329.99y equals 8,379.70. So we're going to distribute that 249.99 and you get 7,499.7 7 and then minus 249.99y. And then we just drop down everything else that we haven't used. And now we're going to combine like terms. So we have two y variables right here, this one and this one. So if we combine those together, whoop, went a little fast on that one, you get 80y. And then we're going to bring down 7,499.7. And you notice this is a positive 80y. So even though this was a minus here, it changed to a plus 80 because when you subtract or when you add negative 249.99 with 329.99 you get a positive 80 so make sure you keep the correct sign so now we're going to subtract 7499.7 from both sides and you get 80 y equals 880 or 880 divide by 80 and you get y equals 11 so now i'm going to take that 11 and plug it back into the first equation because that's just x plus y where y is and then, then we just subtract 11 to find what x equals, and x equals 19. So that means they sold 19 smaller uh, lawnmowers and 11 larger lawnmowers. 
Go Seahawks.